Joining me tonight is the one and only Joseph Perry. He is here all the way from South Korea. He, is, uh, he has brought a film with him that he saw in conjunction with Popcorn Frights here in Miami. Uh, it is a film called Super Dark Times. Super dark. That, that, that title throws me a little bit. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But sure. tell us a little about Super Dark Times. Super Dark Times is a dramatic thriller. It's a coming of age story set in, I believe, the very early 90s, uh, pre internet and pre Columbine school massacre. And I bring that into the conversation because it's about a group of high school friends to whom a very tragic occurrence happens. And how they deal with it and uh, how they try to live their lives around it is the crux of this film. The It has some very horror-like moments in it involving both the initial tragedy and some things that happen later on in the films with our main characters. I want to say quickly that the cast is amazing. Um, I'll mention the three leads. Uh, Owen Campbell plays Zach, and Charlie Tahan plays Josh. The two are best friends. They're kind of outsiders at their high school a bit. And Allison is a popular girl at their school, played by Elizabeth Cappuccino. And she is interested romantically in Zach which is not the best timing for this young man as he tries to uh, cover up what has happened in his life. All right. Well, from the description that there's a, you know, it leads to a lot of paranoia and further violence. So um, what, what kind of film would you compare this to that would excite horror fans? Oh gosh. Um, is it, you know, it's been a, Go ahead. Doc. I was going to say, is it a Stand By Me kind of film? Yes, that's great. Imagine Stand By Me with uh, one very violent act that may or may not be accidental. I don't want to give too much away, but that leads to more violent acts. And uh, it does have some bloody and gruesome moments. Stand By Me is a good comparison, but imagine it uh, as a much darker take on that story. That sounds good. That sounds excellent. Uh, Kevin Phillips is the director. Tell us about his, uh, how he approached this material. Okay. Uh, it's beautifully shot at, with a pretty marvelous cinematography throughout. And he certainly knows how to pace a film. The, Relationships between the friends feel very real, and that's in great part thanks to the actors as well. But um, it's also part of his direction and keeping things extremely interesting uh, while waiting for the next thrilling things to happen. He builds the characters up to be guys who you felt you could have known in high school and gives a lot of empathy towards them so that when the tragedies occur, you're really rooting for the protagonists to hopefully make it out. I would imagine a film like this, the dialogue from writers uh, Ben Collins and Luke Piotrowski would uh, also be very important. It's very important and it feels very realistic. You know, sometimes, Doc, uh, the Dialogue for teenagers in films can feel very forced, but this is, as I said, how you would expect teenagers to speak, and especially right around that era. It's also, even though it's set in the early 90s, except for the obvious lack of uh, technology uh, that we have now that was not around then, it feels like a very timeless film. So I think that's another trait that Kevin Phillips brings to it. It may be set, you know, a couple of decades ago. However, it feels like it could be happening right now. Nice. What is your favorite scene? Well, okay, I've got two. One is the confrontation that leads to the tragedy. And this is when, I'll try to be a little less vague about it. It's when some friends are out on their own and... Uh, Let's see, the temperatures run too high as far as emotions go, and things could be tempered, but unfortunately they're not. 
And then another one is a similar thing at the end, but there's no way that uh, the emotions are going to be reined in at that point, unfortunately. And what is your score? Which is great for horror fans, mm. but not so great for all of our characters. Okay. My score, uh, I'm going to give this four and a half out of five. Doc, this is the film that I watched, and it stayed with me for days afterward, and I can't wait to see it again. Oh, nice. Nice. That sounds that that sounds like the biggest praise you can give a film. Joseph, once again, thank you. Let's say goodnight. Good night. Thank you. Be sure to visit GruesomeMagazine.com to listen to the other gruesome podcasts, Hard News Radio, and Decades of Horror. Also check out the Gruesome Magazine Quarterly, available in digital and print-on-demand format. <laughs>